While participating in a live broadcast, the chief executive officer of Truth Social, who is also known by the nickname DJT, made a public statement claiming that the Securities and Exchange Commission CC is extremely corrupt. As an additional point of interest, he provided further explanation regarding the reasoning behind his decision to abstain from sending a letter to FINRA or the SEC regarding improper shorting. Carry on with the observation, and after that, let us achieve some financial success in the movie. In addition, I would like to discuss the tremendous increase of 104% that occurred in the stock price of SGBX on Friday. The choice that we made to spend the entire day focusing entirely on studying a single stock turned out to be a very good one. As of right now, the code birthday can also be accessed in full capital letters. From this point forward, it is clear that Dion Nunes did not send a letter to either the SEC or FINRA in which he disclosed the illegal shorting of DJT. Evidently, Devon Nunes was aware that the Securities and Exchange Commission C and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority FINRA were purposefully singling out these firms and anticipated that they would not take any action. As a consequence of this, he made the decision to bypass these regulatory organizations and go straight to Congress. First, let us take a moment to listen to the statements that Devon Nunes has made in the past. We are unable to gain access to the capital markets in the same way that other businesses are able to do so effectively. Before we move on, therefore, let us take the time to hear Devon Nunes' point of view. My viewpoint is that the amount of corruption is really widespread, and I believe that as time goes on, Congress will become more aware of the scope of this problem as they continue their inquiry. I predict that this will happen. A person who I personally researched and discovered to have obviously supplied financial assistance for the preparation of a dossier with the goal of harming Donald Trump is entrusted with the task of directing this. How is it possible that somebody like this can be given such a responsibility? There is a consensus among most people that the vast majority of people are aware of this occurrence. For quite some time, it has been obvious that the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC is polluted by corruption. It is to my great satisfaction that powerful individuals are now bringing this to light, both in front of Congress and in the mainstream media. Individual retail investors are not the only ones who are writing these letters in this day and age. Significant personalities from all around the world are also contributing to the writing of these letters. It is important to note that a solution has already been developed to effectively identify illegal short selling. In order to highlight the magnitude of the corruption that exists inside the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, if South Korea has been successful in putting such a system into place, then it begs the issue of why the United States of America has not done the same thing. The financial watchdog of Korea is now working on a surveillance method to identify and deter unlawful short selling, according to a post that Frank made on Twitter. This is a significant component of the effort that is being made to put an end to the custom. The FSS announced on Thursday that the Korean exchange will use its server to construct a platform that will collect data on short selling from 78 institutions located in the country, as well as 21 institutions located outside of the country. The purpose of this study is to investigate a separate international bank that was fined for engaging in illegal short selling activities in South Korea. South Korea has been able to successfully build a new method to identify and prohibit illegal short selling whereas the United States is now unable to achieve the same thing. The global financial institution that was also caught in illegal short selling was none other than Credit Suisse, which is an ironic turn of events. Since June 2023, short selling has been forbidden in South Korea, and this prohibition is still in effect here at the present time. The President of the United States announced in January that the embargo will remain in place until the creation of an electronic system that is capable of managing the negatively impacting results. Tom, the software that manages credit is insolvent. The article in question is no longer relevant because it was written on May 2, 2012, which indicates that it was published not too long ago. Under the circumstances, I am able to deduce that UBS will be the one to shoulder the liability for the penalty. On the other hand, it has been reported that Credit Suisse AG is facing fines of $36 million for engaging in short-selling activities that are entirely lawful in South Korea. The Financial Services Commission FSS has decided to levy a fine on the Singaporean and South Korean subsidiaries of Credit Suisse because of their possible involvement in illegal short selling. That is perfect, Tom. South Korea are just issuing another speed bump fine here to Credit Suisse. But what fascinates me more is they've already designed and built a system to detect and to stop illegal short selling. It's taken a tiny country like South Korea not even one year to entirely eradicate illegal shorting but yet the U.S. doesn't do the same clearly showing just how corrupt the U.S. EC. 
actually is so you can see I messaged the group in the pre-market saying there's absolutely nothing today in the pre-market so far, but I'm watching JAX and SGBX and SGBX. At the open watching SGBX for that $454 breakout, you can see when the market opened after a few minutes, SGBX then got that $454 C breakout where I alerted the group and it ran all the way to $930. That's a total gain of nearly 105% in just over an hour. So guys, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group using the link in the description below, remembering to use code BIRTHDAY at the checkout for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership, and also remember the 100% guaranteed refund policy if you don't make a single profitable trade. Within 30 days, on top of that other hedge funds in South Korea like Santi Capital Management, these funds have been easily identified as engaging in illegal short selling, not only in the United States but also in South Korea which indicates that this behavior is likely pervasive all over the world. Furthermore, in addition to BP and HSBC, there are a number of hedge funds, such as Jan Street and 72, as well as credit institutions that are involved in this transaction. Kristen has also stated that it is prudent to target the broker-dealers, implying that their relative obscurity is not without purpose, given that they are an industry that is relatively unknown. In his opinion, Dion Nunes is of the opinion that the answer is not positive. Additionally, it is important to note that one of the corporations that Nunes is attempting to obtain trading data, information regarding share lending, and compliance practices claims to be conducting 100 investigations at the present time. According to her, DJT has been on the list of securities that are subject to the regulation SH threshold since April 2nd, and shares that are on that list require pre-borrowed locating locations. Despite this, it is possible to determine whether or not these companies truly located the shares for settlement. It is one of the topics that is being investigated in these continuing investigations that market manipulation is being looked into. In respect to the letter that was sent to Congress by TMTG or Truth Social, the integrity of the market as well as the problem of money laundering are of considerable interest. This letter is consistent with the ones that retail investors in MLPs and AMCs have sent out to their respective investors. Nevertheless, what distinguishes it from other similar endeavors is the participation of a well-known organization. Practical Stocks has also tweeted about an additional increase in the short interest of AMC, that, which has now reached 53 million shares. This increase was stated in the tweet. Compared to the number of shares that were shorted in January and June of 2021, this is a new all-time high that has surpassed that level. In addition, I would want to bring up Bill Hang, who is currently dealing with legal issues as a result of losing $36 billion. The trial that is set to take place on Wall Street is slated to take place on May 8th and the former creator of Aragos is due to make an appearance at the federal courthouse in Lower Manhattan on the matter. One of the things that fascinates me the most is the fact that it was not the market makers who were responsible for facilitating the unlawful positions that are currently under investigation. Rather, it was a person named Bill Hang who founded a small hedge fund. These market makers are not the ones that engage in unlawful short selling of stocks and companies on a daily basis or take positions in those companies that are illegal rather. It is simply one person who does these things. It would appear that the amount of corruption is unbounded nonetheless. I personally hope that things will change. In the comments section below, I would appreciate it if you could give your ideas. Additionally, ensure that the notification bell is turned on so that you are notified whenever I publish new videos. Greetings. Thank you again for watching this video. We will are here always to guide you and support you about AMC Shorts however you may better research on it before investing.